Wrestling Sheet Radio. I'm your host, ProWrestlingSheet.com, Editor-in-Chief Ryan Satin, here with my co-hosts, Jamie Iovine. Hey, everybody. As well as Elijah Bates. Hello. Uh, yeah, I like that we're, we've, we've got two weeks in a row where the three of us are all here. Mm-hmm. I feel like we had a little bit of a spell where we were all missing yeah. each other. We had replacements and, and such. But we're all here. We're back. Uh, Better than ever. And... and <laughs> <laughs> Definitely better than well, I don't know. Better than ever. I'll be better as, than as ever once we, I see Endgame. As, as good as we've been. As good yeah. as I'll be until I see Endgame. I don't feel yeah. satisfied right now. Fulfilled. I'm not gonna spoil anything. Jesus, just, there's like signs up here. How could he spoil collider. anything? He hasn't seen it. I know, but he's the. But Ryan had me spoil Infinity War for him. Like whenever <laughs> I saw like an early screening. But of you it. saw it months before it was gonna come out. So I was okay with that. There's a, there's That's a, true. There's you were like, yeah. I don't, look, as people will learn, uh, people I know about me, spoilers don't bother me like a ton. It's the ending that I would be bothered yeah. to have spoiled for this me. This is, like, there's very few times where, like, I'm, like, don't spoil this for me, but it's just, like, I've made it so close at this point without knowing anything, without knowing anything about the pace, any, I don't know, a single thing about the movie for the most part outside of what I've seen in the trailer. So I'm just like, I'm hours away right now. And I'm just like, get that good. To- <laughs> no, no, I, I, I honestly, I'm, probably, I'm the same way. Normally, spoilers really don't bother me at all, like in the slightest bit. Even during Infinity War, like you yeah. said, it didn't bother me. I could have had things woven, it wouldn't have mattered. But this is like the end game where like yeah. 10 years of cinema that I've put effort into, mm. into watching all these movies is finally going to end and I don't want it spoiled for me. And now that we've talked about this, we're going to be inundated with people replying to us with spoilers now probably. I'm t- I won't see them. I, I'm, I'm, yeah. every, every I mean, day. all the East Coast people have already started seeing it. Uh, yeah. All right, well, let's get into the Superstar Shake-Up. That's the real... That, I know that the Superstar Shake-Up was last week, but then it's for some continues. reason, it still continued all throughout this week. Yeah. Uh, so let's discuss some of the things that happened. Uh, the first one being uh, Samoa Joe... Well, actually, no, the first one was Andrade and Zelina being moved back to SmackDown. That's fast. That was a weird one, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I was... I was uh, I was a little confused because they made a big deal about well, his jump know, to Raw. Well, the internet made a quick decision to blame the uh, the current relationship he has with Charlotte Flair. And she's on SmackDown right now. I, I saw that, and I don't believe that was the I'm reason. I'm not saying it is, bit. but the, you know, the internet is – I'm saying that's – what the general consensus on oh, no, trust me. fans since are I, saying. Since I've uh, covered the, the social media for the site, I saw the hundreds of quote tweets that were like, good job, Charlotte. Well done, Charlotte. Woo! Like every single one. I mean, I think it's like, I, I think it's a pretty safe assumption on people's part to think that that's one of the reasons. I really I'm not saying I'm not saying it's the main reason, but it's not to say that it didn't play into it. Mm. I, I mean, really don't think it played into it. Why? Because they're not married. Like, that's really only yeah. married couples. And yeah. they, honestly, they've split up married couples before. Yeah. So I, I don't know if I necessarily think that Charlotte has that much stroke. I don't know. Like, I mean, I... I that's don't... a pretty big stroke to have. Yeah, she's fair. I mean, we got to remember, like, she's still very young. Yeah. You know, she's not like some grizzled vet, you know? Like, she's not she, Ric Flair. No, well, not yet. I mean, but, uh, Ric Flair I mean, never time stopped with... making mistakes like that. <laughs> yeah. Remember I when mean... he French kissed his new wife at his wedding? I do. That's it. <laughs> it was gross. I mean, like most recently. Yeah, yeah. It was a real. And he open... came out to Ric Flair drip, which is a great wedding song. It was like a. <laughs> it was like an open mouth, alternate future Biff Tannen kiss. Yes. <laughs> I, uh, I I watched that uh, YouTube channel, Barcroft TV, mm-hmm. uh, and they have a series on age gap relationships, and I, la- I they're always so fun to watch those, because those kisses are always so awkward. It's the yeah. best part. You're always like, ah! Yeah. <laughs> but love, man. Nothing yeah. beats yeah. it, you know? Good for Rick. Good yeah. for them. Good yeah. for all Good of them. For, for sure. Uh, but, but, I, but, but the Charlotte thing, you know, I, I don't think she has that kind of stroke. And I, I, I saw reports that, that, uh, that Fox had pushed for uh, Alistair Black, sorry, not Alistair Black, had pushed for Andrade and Zelina to move back to SmackDown for the Latino demographic. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's true. I was told by one person it wasn't true. I was told by another it was. I really don't know. Yeah. It would make sense, though. It's it's very lucky for all four people involved. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and honestly, I really think it was best for the product as well. As, as weird as it was, I didn't like the move to Andrade from Andrade. I didn't like Andrade moving to Raw. Yeah, because I mean, I get uh, and uh, it, and in even though it's kind of switched up, still, I think still even after the shakeup, Raw is mostly for the vets. You know, like yeah. Raw is an older show. <laughs> you know, SmackDown was always about the young people, and um, even though they have switched it up, and there are like you know, War Viking Raiders, whatever the fuck, yeah, and. Um, 
and uh, who else? Ricochet's on Raw now. Like, I mean, yeah, there are some dabbles, but it's still fairly, you know, yeah. people no, have been around for a while. Yeah, no, I think it's, I think it's safe to say that SmackDown is definitely the more athletic show right now, like the more athletic match-based show. Uh, and Raw is definitely like Raw, I you know, like what, what you expect. From I think Raw. it makes sense for Andrade to stay on SmackDown, anyways, because he he just had like this great run with Rey Mysterio, and in a lot of ways, it's like I think it helped establish him a lot more too. So he's like the remaining you know Latino dude there now at this point. So I think that he, I think his persona carries more weight on SmackDown than it does on Raw at this point. I, I do too. I feel like he really would have gotten lost in the shuffle on Raw. Yeah. There's a lot of stars on Raw. He, there are, and I didn't see where he really fit in you yeah. know like they didn't he wasn't gonna be one of the top heels um he he wasn't i just i just felt like they would have got vince would have gotten tired of him very fast yeah. he would just don't know what to do with this guy and he would have been in kind of like 50 50 matches for the next year so yeah. i feel like this is a he was already getting treated well on smackdown and i feel like there's more people for him to interact with now that the shake-up has happened too yeah because I feel like a, a long intercontinental title feud between the two of them, between Finn and Andrade, would be great. That'd be a banger. Yeah, I mean, it's and it seems like that's the direction they're going in based off of what we've seen the past few weeks. Um, but yeah, like I said, I, I, I just think that uh, SmackDown needed him much more than Raw did, uh, and that goes for Aleister Black too. You know, Aleister Black also moved to SmackDown. Uh, I think it was it, for the best because it separated him and Ricochet as well. I, I, they didn't need to be a tag team. No, like I mean, it was great that they got to come yeah, in. Yeah, like they that. had some fun, but no. you know, it was not necessary. Hey, they, got, they got a they got a match at WrestleMania. Yeah, like, that was pretty cool. Like I mean, and you know what? Like now they can move on from that. Or, like that'll always be a great note in history. God, like can we really talk about how crazy that is? You're not even WWE year. You got a match at yeah, WrestleMania. It's pretty lucky. Like, not even six months. Yeah, yeah. We actually forgot to talk about like a featured match. Not a, not a pre-show. No, no yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. It was on no, the main that's card. A, that says a lot for sure, for sure. And also, you know, he. he I think two of them were two of the standout performers in that match too. I mean, they how Ricochet, could they not be? Ricochet is, you know, he's a fantastic, insane. insane. Yeah. That, yeah. that video you guys sent where it was like, Doing! like the different sound effects of him running in the ring was incredible. <laughs> <The> bongos. <laughs> um, I also feel like the Alistair Black promo they aired on SmackDown was a good step in the right direction for Alistair Black. Mm. I think his character needs. Definition. Yeah, it needs definition. It can't just be the guy who raises from the crypt. Yeah, that's not his whole character. It's yeah. got to be deeper than that. He's got to be the counterculture, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, because then you kind of have to get differentiate because he's always going to have that label as whenever you dabble in any sort of the occult, you're going to get the Undertaker comparison, yeah. which, he all, which he does more than anyone. Yeah, and I mean, how could he not? The way he rises up from the ground. I mean, it's. Uh, I mean, you know, he. he I mean, if this was. 10 years ago he'd be in the ministry you know like, yeah but uh, i was gonna say like if, if this gimmick was 10 years ago it'd be for somebody that they were just introducing so undertaker would have somebody to fight yeah you know and, like, um, and um it's different it's 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 a good way to use that the occult because everybody loves an occult character mm -hmm. i mean that's all i mean it, it, it they're if, that's you can, <laughs> if you can do, everyone loves the occult if you can an use, occult character no, in wrestling <laughs> No, it's just like because then they can use other worldly methods to to screw with you. Yeah, you know, Kane, or, Undertaker, Mankind, Papa Shango, Papa Shango. I mean, Gangrel. Yeah, I, they're, they're, I love them. And um, but this is a great way to kind of take those elements, but kind of to your own modern twist on yeah. it, and a little more realistic because it doesn't kind of take you out of okay, Undertaker is going to heaven today. You know, <laughs> like that's uh, it, there's none of that. Yeah, I would like if, and I, I, I don't know how you know, obviously it. It might have been um, written out or you know directed to the you know to, to, told to them to um, at the last minute, which is why it was just a dark black room and him yeah. sitting on a chair. Regular clothes. Yeah, regular, just dark, regular clothes. Um, I, I would like maybe a touch of the NXT vignettes they did with him, where it kind of looked like he was like in a weird church or something. Like I, I, I dug those. I thought they were yeah. really. Uh, they were they were cool. Done, they were, well, they were done in a cool way. They need like time to scout a location at least. Yeah. So I, I yeah I don't know if maybe that's why I was like hey. Last minute decision. There's no churches around here. Yeah, <laughs> and we need to have an Alistair Black thing to help, you know, cement that he's on SmackDown. So do it in that back room with yeah. all the lights off, basically. And you know what? You know what? what? I'm going to say, uh, and I don't know if I'm people, people are going to agree with me or not. A character like Alistair Black, not Ricochet, because Ricochet's essence doesn't lie in the, the, the brouhaha. Um, I would have preferred him debuting a different way. I would have preferred vignettes. Yeah. Me too. I He's would. like the perfect example of someone who who needed vignettes. Alistair's coming, like that would 
take him off TV completely for like four months, if yeah. that. Like that, and like just vignette saying he's coming to the main roster. That'd be great. That's a problem though too with this. Like in a lot of the ways that they typically will introduce NXT people to be like, let's int- introduce them live so we get that live kind of like that smark pop that often happens in certain arenas and everything. But they almost do it. It's like just to get people excited about it right away instead of slowly building interest over a couple of weeks. I do think that's a disservice to the talent sometimes when it's well, like, yeah, it's great that they get that initial pop, but also there's the people who don't know who they are well, that need to be in the case of acclimated like, to them. The War Raiders or whatever their name is now, like, they should, like, people are already like, are they Vikings? Like, what's going on here? There's no introduction. There's no definition. They're just people from NXT with a new name, and it's just like there's no there's no character development that happens right there. It's almost like you you're just sending them out there to sink or swim, and then hopefully they swim, and hopefully they swim for long enough that we can find out who they are. Well, I think Lars is a perfect example of that. I think if they hadn't done those months of vignettes saying Lars Sullivan is is creeping and Lars Sullivan is coming, everything he has done on the main roster so far would be less. Uh, impactful. Yeah, I don't think anyone would have cared as much, and it probably would have already been. It maybe would have already been dropped because. But but I also I, I truly believe that those vignettes that that made the viewer aware of his presence and and his impending doom on the main roster like tr- truly helped. Vignettes yeah. can. Re- I mean, as you just said, vignettes could really really go a long way for talent. They really can, especially if there's somebody lacking verbal skills. Like, I don't think Lars is known for his promo, you know? Yeah. But And even in the case of somebody like, you know, Ricochet, it's just like, I love Ricochet. He's an incredible athlete, does crazy things, but it's just like, who is he? Like, what, what's special about him, you know? Well, I think there's a reason that we haven't learned anything about Ricochet yet, and oh. I, I, I can't go too much into it, but I, I've heard things that, like, there's internal discussion on like what his character quote unquote is going to be uh-huh. uh, so I don't know that's I, weird to have somebody debut and not understand what their character is though too. quickly they pull people they're just literally like on a whim like hey we need new people up bring them up yeah. that's how it felt with those, I, they, with those it, it really did that's why it was almost just kind of like yeah they should have given Alistair a lot of vignettes like it would have been great him, even a month like four weeks of vignettes would have been fantastic but all of a sudden he's just there with Ricochet and even if you know the NXT brand well you're still kind of like Wait, why are they? Why are they? Why are they together? And the way now? they introduced all of them, like with uh, Gargano and uh, Ciampa as well, it was like, oh, we're g- just giving the NXT kids a time to shine. Like, like it's almost like they shouldn't be taken as seriously because I mean, they even gave them the NXT graphics for the first yeah. few weeks. Like, it was, they still have Johnny Gargano and Ciampa on the main roster page as if they still got called up, and I've been so confused by it. Like. <laughs> Clearly, they're not on the main roster. We haven't seen Gargano in weeks. Like, yeah. he's that very first week. And, and I mean, he's the current champion. Yeah. <laughs> the it current, makes no sense. He's the current NXT champion. Well, but, um, the War Raiders, Viking experience, Viking whatever, they're the NXT champions right now. Tag champions. Yeah. yeah. What a what a mess. <laughs> <laughs> Like, seriously. Hey, everything with the Warriors is such a mess. I feel so bad for them because they're such a dope tag team and all of this is making a joke. They, it. it really is because you know what? They had all this momentum. They had so much. I just banged the de- desk. Sorry for the and distortion. You, I could hear the thing go up. Yeah, that's why I said sorry. But I'm so, like, it had so much momentum. Yeah. So much more than coming any off, tag team. Coming off a takeover, they had all the momentum in the world. Before that. Yeah. Before where they came to WWE. Like they, like people knew who they were. Yeah. yeah apparently, also there's a there was like a. I, I'm not super familiar with the WWE fan council, so I don't know. I, I think it's only run by fans, but WWE like pushes it because it helps them get feedback from yeah. other fans and stuff. What is this? It's called like the WWE fan council, and they send out like surveys and stuff. We must consult the council. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I, I'll be honest. I One wasn't, council I, to rule them all. <laughs> Chairman, I, I wasn't. <laughs> Chairman, I say, may I have the floor, please? I, was, I object. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't super familiar with the council, so I signed up to be part of it because I'm interested in these in these surveys now. You would, but apparently there's like a waiting list to be on the the council. Whole thing. Yeah, I'm not super familiar with it, like I said, but apparently is it, is it everybody in robes. Yeah. <laughs> Peregrine took. Um, and, and, and you just do different Lord of the Rings names. <laughs> <laughs> Not the beard. 
<laughs> um, but in the in one of the things they sent out this week, uh, in one of the stories apparently they sent out this week, they referred to the Viking Raiders as the Viking Warriors now. Okay. So there's been additional speculation now that they're going to get a third name change what to you, Viking what, Warriors. Uh, okay. What do you think it's going to be after that? <laughs> I hope. I really hope they're not taking everyone's like tongue in cheek joke about giving them a new name every week seriously. I know, I know. Because that would ruin it. Well, because they, they're they... thinking that's on purpose. I don't know. <laughs> no, is that what he's saying? Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> what if, you know, you know what it was like, like the biggest downer for me is like they did one of their moves and they renamed their move the Viking Experience. That's so and when funny. I heard it, I was like, come on, are you just trying to make us think that you were talking about the move all along? <laughs> that was what I that what they did and I was dying too because I think you texted the group and one of you texted the group about it when it happened and I, I was cracking it was like oh my god they're totally just gonna pretend like it was the name of the move the whole time what are you talking about what no that was always their finishing move name what, it do, was you, just what a, do you mean the graphics guy was confused yeah. graphics guy's fired yeah, the announcer's fired too <laughs> <laughs> well, didn't they even give their graphics wrong? The like when they did, when they were on Raw, they gave them the Usos title card. Did they? I no, no, they... no. That was when the Usos were going to debut, and they showed it for Chad Gable and, and Bobby Roode, <laughs> oh. uh, who was also another weird. It's also another weird thing in I, all of this. I am not casting judgment on the new Bobby Roode yet. Robert, Robert Roode. Roode. Robert Roode. <laughs> I am not casting judge yet, judgment yet because I feel like. There's got to be more than just the mustache. I'm not casting judgment. Well, maybe slight judgment, but I just laugh because it just is. It, it seems so unnecessary. Yeah. The name change seems ridiculously <laughs> unnecessary. <laughs> Bobby Roode to Robert Roode. Like, how about it's Robbie? It's literally Rude? just Vince being like, "Well, that's a child's name. No one takes to a Bobby seriously. You take a Robert seriously. Yeah. You know, Robert. Give him some facial hair." And the facial Robert hair thing. Robert Lewis Stevenson. <laughs> the facial hair thing also, it's like, I, I hope it was not a thing Vince told him and to I do. Want I hope it's just a thing I he did, like, but I don't believe that. And nobody in the creative team was like, he just looks like Rick Rude. That's, 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 <laughs> that's why I think it's so silly, because it's literally like Vince was like, hmm, how do we make him more like Rob, Rick Rude? Do the neck breaker. <laughs> do the neck breaker. Your mustache, and we'll yeah. call you Robert. R R. Robert yeah. Rude. Perfect. They even spell his last name the same. No, it's Rude. Isn't it R O? Was it? Well, Rude no, I'm sorry. Right Rob, Rob, Rick Rude's actual spelling of his last name was R O O D E. Okay. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> and also, I, I know there's going to be some TNA fanboys out there who are like, oh, well, he used the name Robert Rude in TNA. There's no freaking chance that Vince McMahon was like, whoa. I liked him better when he used the name Robert uh, Rude in TNA. Like, there's no way. There's, did he? Back in 2008. Yeah, like a long, <laughs> long, long time ago. And there's no... I, I have a very hard time believing that it wasn't a direct... That this wasn't a Vince McMahon directive. I, I mean, I don't know that's not inside info, but I have a hard time believing that it wasn't. I feel like... What's his gimmick now? He has a mustache. <laughs> like, is that it? And we've seen that before. It's like, Cody Rhodes did that already. Yeah. The mustache yeah, thing. And there's no way there's, Robert Rude's going to do it better than, than there's Cody There's part of me where it's just gimmick. like, I feel like Joey Ryan is the only one really in the wrestling industry who rocks a mustache like that, that pulls it off where it's part of his gimmick, where it plays into it on a really like kind of layered level and everything. And just having a mustache and like the theme song Glorious, like, who is Robert Rude? Again, like it goes back to well, like... Well, that's been, that's been kind of the problem for since the beginning. You I know? wish that Mojo talking into the mirror would eventually result in Robert Rude talking back to him through the mirror. Whoa, where's, where's Mojo been? Yeah. With, where's, Dude, cracked, where's Cracked Mirror Mojo been? I felt so bad about that. Like they literally did the climax of those promos where and the mirror nothing. was broken and then nothing since. Like with his painted eyeball oh, thing. Oh, right. Yeah. 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 Face paint thing going yeah. on. Yeah, Robert Rude, to define his character, said, aggressive, impressive, masculine, mature. Robert Rude is absolutely glorious. Mm. I still don't know what that means. Well, there you go. <laughs> aggressive, <laughs> impressive, magically delicious. What was the rest of it? <laughs> I also feel like the Robert Rude, or the, the Joey Ryan thing, I feel like with Joey... I just think of the Kit Kat song. <laughs> Strike Star, Star Car. Car. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> it's crazy though it, it, the Bobby Roode thing he, the, when you mentioned Joey Ryan yeah. and he really does look like Bobby Roode he looks like Joey Ryan's not woke uncle you yeah. know like they look or his older marine brother <laughs> yeah, <that's, yeah. laughs> hey why not make him a marine 
mean? Like, let's like just do something different. What would you do to Robert Rude to make him a distinguishable character? <laughs> He went to ROTC school. <laughs> I kind of want them to hire Joey Ryan now just so they can have them be a family. Yeah, the Rude I, I hope he does get a deal. He's never going to sign with WWE. I saw that report today where it was like they I, want him for a coach role or to come into NXT and then transition to being the coach. He's not going to do. He's not going to move to Florida to make less money, yeah. when, especially when AEW is already factoring him into things. And, and also, when he... Ooh, you think maybe that they're just doing this so he doesn't sign with AEW? Of course. Of course, that's why they tried that. Of course. Wow, huh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, of course. He's been doing all his AEW. Days. One of the biggest parts of All In when that when the whole mm-hmm. Dick Druid thing happened, he was locked to a contract he couldn't get out of, and the second he can get out of it, he, apparently there's interest from WWE. Also, why would he want to go there when they took his tag team partner from him and did absolutely nothing with her? Like, they have done nothing with Candice. It's ridiculous. Like, she was on NXT this week and was killing it, Probably one of the top female talents they have in the in, in all of NXT in the performance in all of NXT in the performance center and just they're not doing anything with her. Like mm-hmm. I, I liked the tag team with her and Casey and I hope it continues. Yeah, they keep just I mean nothing against Bianca Belair and 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 Shannon Baszler, nothing at all. They're incredible talent women, but they need to keep cycling these women, yeah, you know. Yeah. And we've seen like, I mean now that Kyrie Sanga called up, it's just Bianca and Shayna going at it again over yes. and over and. And EO's in there too, but I yeah I agree I, I completely agree. Yes, they, EO's in there as well. They, they, yeah. Also, I kind of feel like they're pushing the women's tag team thing on NXT, but it's like there's no women's tag team division in NXT. So I mean, I know that the belts can go to each brands or whatever, but I don't know. It's like a lot of time being put into I the feel tag like, team division. I feel like that whole concept of the belts can go anywhere is probably going to go bye bye pretty quick. I mean, I feel like those women's titles are going to stick around on one show pretty predominantly. Yeah, and I can't really be like, do we really have to go to Florida? Like, you know, an extra day of work? Yeah. You know, like... <laughs> I, I- I would like to see them do it once, but I do think that, yeah, I, I have a feeling we're not going to see the I'm a little, women's tag belts defended well, NXT. I'm a little worried that they'll introduce another set of women's tag belts. That would you know, to stay on, well, so they have one on each show like they do every other title. Triple H has talked about it yeah. for NXT He in one of those conference <laughs> calls, and he kind of said that he doesn't know if he feels like the division is there yeah. in NXT, but also they're starting to build it, so you, could, you might not be wrong. By know? the end of the year, who knows? I, I mean, I, I really dig the concept of having just one set of championships. I like that Becky is going across both shows right now, even though she has two belts. But um, And I like that the tag champs have to go across both shows. And I, and like, I wish that there was I, – I like that concept of traveling champions. I hate the, cam- the concept of traveling champions. Really? Yeah, I've always, been against, I've always hated it. I like it. it. I think just because I feel like if there's no world champion on your show – then, like, what's everyone there for? Well, I think that the world champion should be on every show, every like, TV show. But if he's in a feud with someone on SmackDown, let's say, yeah, what's happening with no, anyone I mean, on Raw I, in the main event? See, there's I, no main event title. There's well, no main event. Imagine if there feud? was just one women's title right now, and she was going across both shows. I, would like, hate it. I, I don't know if it's sustainable. No, but I, I like, don't like with Becky doing it even. Yeah, the fact that Becky's going to be doing it, defend your belt twice, I think is silly at the pay per view. I think if there were more, was more of that though, you wouldn't need people necessarily. Like you wouldn't need the women's champions to be on like every single show. You know, like I think that because you'd have some people crisscrossing the shows and everything, it would keep things interesting. Anyways, we're, well, no, we're, no, we're I, probably never going to agree on that. No, no, I, I, I think it's an interesting conversation because you know Triple H kind of talks about it. Where like with NXT, because it's one of the things I, it's one of the things that'll that. I like and dislike about NXT is the fact that they they only have so much time on the show yeah. that not everyone gets a, a chance. Like, there's not you don't see the top NXT people on every single episode of NXT. I mean, for the most part, but still, like, there's a lot that aren't. Yeah. There's a lot of popular talent that aren't seen on the shows. And to me, that's one of its faults. Is like, man, I want to see that person every week, not every like three weeks or yeah. something like that. And so that's what bothers me about the traveling champion concept is that like. We are. Everyone gets so mad when Brock's not there. Yeah. But there's gonna be a champion who's there, but not there. Like that's weird to me. I don't know. Yeah. I see your point. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, what do you guys think about Samoa Joe and Cesaro being moved to Raw? I'm for it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, the Samoa Joe thing had to happen considering they moved the Intercontinental title. Yeah. To, yeah. To was, SmackDown can't have no mid tier title on. No, on the show. I also think it's a good opportunity for Cesaro. Like, I mean, he's by himself right now. I don't know how long that's going to maintain and everything. I don't know how long Sheamus is going to be out. Um, he's a concussion, right? 
Yeah, he's reported that doing some sort so, of So, like, I mean, yeah. I assume that it, whatever the injury is, I, I assume that he'll probably be taking a little bit more time off and then might even be necessary for, let's say, a concussion or something like that because the dude is probably due a, a break at this point because I know that he was dealing with a lot of wear and tear for a long period of time. But Cesaro, I mean, this is a great opportunity for him to, like, to stand out again. He stood out as a tag team specialist and, like, it is a, the, one of the most powerful dudes in the company. I think he, he had a ton of momentum when he won the first Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal at, at WrestleMania 30. And I think that, like, he, he kind of hasn't had that singles momentum for since then, really. I think he's manager. Yeah, I think that I I think Cesar is great. I think he's awesome. He's one of my, one of the best wrestlers in the company. He's so like just like when you watch him, it's just impressive. I think when he but, took that dinger to the teeth and everything like that, he basically, dude. I was there for that. That was oof. the freakiest thing I've ever seen. Like oof. that that won him favor in the company for life. I feel like yes, but I just. We've seen it with Cesaro so many times. Like Cesaro, they 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 make it seem like they're gonna push him. Yeah. Then they don't. There they get over it real fast. Then they stick him in a tag team. The tag team gets over until they break up the tag team and they try to push Cesaro as a singles guy again. And then they get over it and the cycle continues. You know what I think the mistake is, and I think I'm gonna get a lot of people that disagree with me. I think he needs to be a face, and I'm gonna tell you why. Because he's done the heel thing. Consistently, every time he's been featured in a major angle, he's been a face before, but every time he's been featured in a major angle, he's been a heel. Yeah. I think he hasn't been featured in a main event. Well, I don't, I'm not saying he needs to be shot straight up to the main event of the pay per view, but he hasn't really been featured as a like a, like wh who he is, like somebody who has like is the be one of the best. I mean, not a Daniel Bryan, but. A guy who's, uh, but a little bit like that, yeah. you know, like who's known as one of the greatest pound for pound wrestlers in the business that can go with anybody. Like you sh showcase what he can do. Yeah. The same way they started at Daniel Bryan doing that backflip over the top rope, the uh, all, all this, all the crazy stuff that he would like the the surfboards well, that he would do. Like know, I think that he needs to be featured more as uh, not like just a, a, a conniving coward because he's not. Yeah. Like, how do you look at that guy and think, oh, he should run? Like, what? No. Well, they like, tried. I remember when he, he was in the Superstar Shakeup, not Shakeup, the, the Raw After Mania or whatever, a few years back when he, when, he came, when he recovered from injury and he had that new gimmick of pulling off the tuxedo. Remember but that? I don't think that was, I mean, yeah, well, first off. That was like his real face push. Yes, yes, it was. But I'm going to tell you why I don't think it worked. First off, I think it made um, him look like a stripper. Yes, that was a that was a ma that was the first like uh, you you had your opinions about the suit. <laughs> it's like because I remember when he came out in the suit and I was thinking, oh well, that's cool. I bet I guess he's gonna take like like you know Ted DiBiase had the same thing, but yeah. he wasn't showcasing it. Like he kind of did it off camera. Like, yeah. like when like the other guy was entrancing when he I mean the guy was doing his entrance, you cut back and Ted DiBiase's in a speedo. And, well, uh, it wasn't like Ted DiBiase was like. Yeah, Sha! yeah, because I was like, oh, like oh, he's kind of got a ten, but they like when he kind of like the f spotlight, brrr, yeah, like it, including the pants, yeah, and then, well, you kind of believed that Ted DiBiase actually dressed like that, yeah, he, yes, I don't believe that Cesaro walks around like that <laughs> because they were. Well, suit I know what they were trying. Off, whatever. To, I know what they were trying. It's kind of like they were like, okay, we should make him more like Jason Statham. That's a, yeah, hundred percent what they are going for, but. Make it like James Bond. Yeah, <laughs> like it's like, mixed with like a little bit of Magic Mike. I was too. gonna say, picture like Jason Statham is in the new Magic Mike. Go, <laughs> but with the James Bond entrance, they have the oh, they yeah, have the James. I forgot they. Had. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that was too many movies shoved into one. I didn't like, think about that. But like, I, it, that's a sh but. <laughs> Like though, because I think they should have just stuck with the Statham thing because that would have worked if he was like that, like the real professional. Yeah, like that would have been that well, could have worked. Well, I think that was too gimmicky. Like the Jason Statham thing. Like yeah, we get it. He's bald. He's tough. He's he's European. We get it, Statham. But I feel like he's not. And you know him better than me. I've never talked to him. But like. He's a very nice man. He doesn't strike I, me as a Jason Statham. He's, he's not. He's not a. He doesn't. He's not as. In, he's not. He doesn't have as a, a cold demeanor. Yeah. Um, he's like. He seems like a really nice I guy. I feel like yeah. one, one of the biggest problems with Cesaro is that they that he plays an idiot sometimes. Like he, he like he's he, like he's such a good wrestler. He's been in a lot of food fights. Like he, yeah. And, and and he you know like <laughs> I love I, the guy. I feel like him and Sheamus kind of almost had to dumb down how good of and and accomplished wrestlers they were in a lot of ways to be able to wrestle all these other people and be play, play off of so many people and put so many people over too. But Cesaro is like, 
if he went went on like a more aggressive path, I you know, think so. That's what he needs to do. I think it needs to be like he needs to instill fear into people that he's that he's an ass kicker. Like I'm not saying anybody. he should be John Cena um, no, when I say he's a face, but I say like b- bill him as like a guy. Who's a fighter? Yeah, who'll like, beat you within an inch of your life. I mean, I, look, I, I, people might not agree with me, but like, I felt like when he was the rugby player, that was when he was the most like scary that he was when he had that rugby player gimmick where it was like, a you know, guy who used to play rugby, they got kicked out of the league. And he with the jacket, when he had the tough. jacket? Yeah, just when he first debuted with what's yeah. the name, Oxana or whatever, yeah, and he yeah. was like the too tough rugby player. Guy, and that's what they used to always get over on the commentary. He got kicked yeah. out of the league. I thought that like made him seem like and a total badass. And then they were badass. like, he's not a rugby player anymore, but he can say hello in five languages. And that's when I got so frustrated. And I was like, this and is I, what your resources are. That was when yes. things started and to like change. It was, oh, they can never pick and, one thing with him. And that's why, because you you said it. Yes, it's just frustrating to me because he's a friend, and I know that he's so incredibly talented. That, and they, they know him, it. They, they know it. And then they give him sit, like they have him lose to a child. You know, like to be fair, that that <laughs> wasn't the worst thing to have him do. I don't think because Braun is the one that beat them, and, and the bar really did get him over. Like, That's true. The bar got. I mean, the I, bar got that. The bar made that match totally. And the bar. I was actually surprised they split up the bar because yeah. the bar really was had gotten over. I was. Out of all the teams that got split up in, in the Superstar, everyone that got split up in general the past couple of years, people that have gotten split up. The bar, I think I was the most bummed about. They were having really good tag Yeah, they they were had a really good chemistry. I'm, you know, they were both European. They both, like, kind of, they looked like they would have hang out, like, they would have hung out, like, outside of wrestling. Yes. You know what's a little disappointing, too, is I feel like when Sheamus is ready to go, they're just going to put the two of them against each other. I think so. You know, it's just like, it, I, think put, I hope they put them back together. You think they put them against each other Well, again? I just think that that's how it started, isn't it? Yeah. Like, and th- that's how you, like, it's such a natural conclusion, but what? But more than that, it's so easy to fall back on. You know, a lot of times, like even when they're just like, "Okay, Kofi beat Daniel Bryan at, at WrestleMania." If I, Daniel Bryan weren't hurt, Daniel Bryan would be like taking him on at Money in the Bank. But like, you know what? I really think that they'll like now that I see, I have hope because now that I see what they're doing with everybody and that they're kind of really showcasing the small, like the more athletic, yeah. like indie guys. You know, indie guys have taken over the business. Yeah, and um. And, <laughs> and, and it's it's crazy to say, but yeah, it's right, true. Right. true. Very true. But and I think that now that now that that's kind of in the air now, I think that the the, sto- the final story of where the tier is for Cesaro is yet to be told. I think he's re- I think he could get that shot again. I would love to see him in a program with Seth Rollins. <clears throat> Seth Man. Rollins and homies. I feel like Seth Rollins could help him get to that next level They're if bo- given one chance. They both could, like, God, they could go for two hours. They, I feel like yeah. they'd put on a such they'd put on such a killer match, those two. And like it, the cardio the right of those guys? Jesus Christ. Not not a main, you know, not not one of the big events, you know, but like a smaller one, you know, like that's maybe not like a marquee top four. Because yeah. like as we've seen, event, you know? I'm gonna say something right now. WrestleMania kind of has a curse when it comes to these matches that are supposed to be like, oh, that's going to be a fucking bar yeah, burner. Yeah, Shinsuke and AJ. Yeah, I mean, like, it's a lot of these matches that, like, kind of, like, eh, they weren't, like, ama- like Batista and Triple H. Y2J and, um, and Kevin, Kevin Owens. Owens. Yeah, it's, like, it's, I think the hype would have, uh, like, the overhype of that by the internet, in the internet alone, yeah. would have ruined it. Fair. And so I agree with you. Um, okay, uh, B-Team to SmackDown. <laughs> I feel so bad for the B team. You like that movie? You're into that one? I'm not, just cool. Why not? I, 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 I honestly. <laughs> hey, at least of, they mentioned them. Yeah. I was kind of hoping that maybe they were going to be involved in this Firefly Funhouse thing or something. Maybe. <sighs> just reminded me that I had a Miss Brace thing today. <laughs> <laughs> what you? Oh, what thing? No, he had, he had, oh, he had, oh, he had yeah. a little thing today. And uh, well, the, you know, the Firefly Funhouse, Funhouse thing, I, I don't have any inside info on it, but there was that report this week that shareholders uh, were unhappy with the, how dark it was. Oh, come on. And that Is that might, real? Or... I, I don't know. I, I literally, I really, the, the source it came from has, is very hit or miss, um, but... Uh, I mean, the tweet, these tweets from Bray Wyatt made me think that maybe there was something to it. Because, I mean, like. I don't know, but he's playing a, a weird, creepy dude right now, though, too. Yeah, so then he, he, said, but, then he goes, said he loves them. Like, maybe. Because I, I, mean, I didn't see it as sarcasm. Really? I thought it looked like it was in character. I kind of. like. Did you read it as it was in character? Because he said hashtag kayfabe. So I thought it was super not in character. Who knows? I mean, like, you really can't tell with him. He's like I told. And he's he hashtag like, the director of the movie or the the, the, the vignettes. That that's what, dude. I'm saying like like he's. I said this last week. He is one of those last of the dying breed, 
not kayfabe fuck it i'm still yeah. i'm still one of those like i like i keep everything to the chest i won't tell like he doesn't tell dude like he's like but that's why i thought these tweets seemed like they were <laughs> weird because he said i love stockholders and i love all of you hashtag firefly funhouse hashtag i miss roman hashtag kayfabe. what was that does he miss roman reigns that's what i figured hashtag kayfabe <laughs> that's hashtag, so weird. That's hashtag, so weird. hashtag nfl draft Hashtag baby shower, which there you go, there you go. Uh, hashtag that's, process yeah, over outcome. <laughs> yeah, I figured. Hashtag process over outcome, which to me that's super not in character to tweet that. That's what people tweet when they're unhappy about things. Uh, hashtag Abby the witch. Hashtag maestro. Hashtag Indiana. Hashtag Pex. Uh, hashtag merch. Hashtag Jason Baker, which was the director of these uh, of the vignette. I don't know. And then he also tweeted saying, to see a ghost, you have to believe in it. It saddens me that you all miss so much. Oh, well, maybe next time. That doesn't sound like... I mean, it's... I... That, that one sounds a little more foreboding, I suppose. Right? Yeah. And that was the same day that report came out. So I I, I, I don't know. I, re- I really don't know. It just seems know. really quick just to dump something, you know, to like, to to not keep going I with think, it. you know what I think scared them was the chainsaw. Yeah. I think, if I think also the children being the audience. <laughs> really? I bet you that was part hard, of it, too. Man. I that was, it, and I agree with you. That was the best part. That part when they were all booing him, and he just had that look on his face, and he was like, I know, I know, I deserve that. That was my favorite part of the whole thing. It was really brilliant. I, 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 I enjoyed it thoroughly because it was so different. I don't know if they're actually pulling back on it. I'm just saying I saw that report that was I out know, there. But I've asked I was, a few people what happened you, back. But ever since last night, you put that fear in me. I've had that fear in me too. And then I saw that. And then I saw those tweets and I was like, God, I hope not. However, after that report came out, I believe they did still air the vignette on SmackDown. But I heard that. And I don't know this, but a couple people tweeted me saying that the vignette was pulled from re-airing. I did see that in, internationally in or something see like that. that. But I don't know if it was true, but they did. I, they I did just saw people tweeting me that. that. I, so I don't know. Uh, I just hope give that, it a couple weeks. I know. Just on. give it time. Give it a couple weeks so we at least, at the very least, we can walk away with a couple of these things. Agreed. Agreed. I, I feel like people liked it. Am I wrong? No, people. For the, I mean, wrestling fans are hard to track. Obviously, yeah. I would say. 75% of people liked it. And that's a really good number for wrestling fans, I think. Like, for the most part, when I tweet people saying, what did you think about this? For the most part, I'd positive. say it went over if, way better than, like, the Viking experience. If anybody, yeah. if anybody doesn't like it, just think back to the first time you saw Broken Matt. Just think about it. Yeah. Nobody liked that. I did. First time? Yeah. I, th- I remember that first night when he did that video where it was, like, 15 minutes of just, like, Staring at the camera and making different faces, and I thought it was the most meta genius thing I had ever seen. Okay, well, but maybe I, that's just me. I don't know. It may be just <laughs> it you. It could have just been me. People, didn't, maybe there were people who didn't like it. Initially. I just remember the time that video when he lost to Jeff. I think he lost to Jeff. I was still and he was mad just standing at... in his hotel room, just like just making faces at the camera. I remember. I, I don't know. I minutes and laughed. I guess maybe. You know what made it mad? Why? You know why I didn't like it? I remember why. It's because it was too close together with the time where he made that weird suicide video. No, that was years ago. Was it? Yeah, yeah that was like when I was. That was like ten years ago. I um, no, what, the suicide thing when he did that video. So ten years before that video. No, they yeah, were, were probably like no. I don't think there were ten. Those ten, were ten years, years before apart. the weird face video. I, I, yeah, I, I would say. When Matt Hardy threatened suicide and he did that weird video. Yeah. suicide. So to, long ago. Suicide to. I would say to that, I would say seven years part. Yeah, that's why I would say like 10 uh, years ago. Well, I guess it also shows how much I didn't well, watch actually, the GNA product at the time. 2000, Cause yeah, just, 2011. Cause, that's a long time ago. Is that when it was? Yeah, 2011. Good and when me. did he debut the Broken Probably, Universe thing? Like I'm when he showed up with, the, with all the... 2016? Man, that, faces. That that I remember that writing that. That soon? That Matt recently? Hardy filmed himself making weird faces for over five minutes. Oh, I thought it was 15, five minutes. Same That's thing. so long time. Uh, June 13th, 2016 is when that video so was. So five made. years. So five years. Still a long time, part. I guess. But you were, I remember actually when the broken stuff started and you were super not into it. I remember, like, you still were kind of anti Hardy boys. Like, you weren't. You yeah, weren't quite the I, like, Hardy I, Mark that you became afterwards. I, and I'll you. admit it, and I'll admit it, because <laughs> like a lot of stuff that they did at the time, at the time, I mean, uh, and I still do at this point. I, I, I think I, I, I think it's one of the things that is just part of my DNA is that I really have a hard time separating the artist from the art. 
And, I'm the same way. And um, like you know, like uh, the whole thing with I mean, whether or not uh, you believe anything about R. Kelly, Michael Jackson, so on and so forth, Bill Cosby, you can, I have a hard time. Like I I like for instance, I loved the Cosby Show. I can't watch it anymore. I, I literally. I Michael Jackson is my favorite artist of all time, and now that I'm an adult who watched that Finding Neverland okay, documentary, well, let's not get into. No, that. I'm not gonna get into. Oh. It. I'm the same way. He's I innocent. literally, I literally, <laughs> I haven't been able to listen to Michael Jackson songs yeah, since. I agree. I, I, with you. And R. Kelly too. And I know you. We shouldn't talk about that on here, but like both of them. On my shuffle. I have their entire discography yeah. on my shuffle, and every time one comes up, I just go like. And I have like, yeah. that's more like, this it sucks, sucks now. But, yeah. This sucks now. But, and, that go, and that went with um, the Hardy Boys. And um, I loved them so much growing up. And just to see all what, like, they're, them going through their rough patches and then showing up to work. Like, uh, and I saw Turning Point with Jeff and Sting. And, like, they were, I was like, God, you guys had everything, you know? And, like, I lo- you guys let me down so much. And I guess it really took Matt coming around, showing that he had changed. And he didn't owe me changing. No, but he definitely what? struggled with his own demons, too. I mean, it's Absolutely. not like... Absolutely, and they, it's well documented. About it. yeah. yeah, and I'm not saying that he owed me anything, because he didn't. But I'm saying, like, as a fan, I it, like I couldn't be a fan of his knowing what was going on behind the scenes. Yeah. And now that that's not the case, and I know that both of them are happily married and sober and have beautiful children and have flourishing careers. Seem really happy. And seem very happy. And now I could be, like, I'm a fan of a happy person, you know? So mm-hmm. that's that's why. That makes sense. In, uh, in regard to the Bray Wyatt thing, you know, and I said, like, I hope we get a couple more of them at the very least. I realize that's a limiting thought, too. But what I, what I think about when I think about these out there concepts that are so not rooted in reality, it feels like, um, I hearken back to the Warrior and Jake the Snake's promos that they did together, where where Snake Snake Man was like burying Warrior Man in a grave, you know, and he had him like do all these different things, had him go into a casket for a period of time, like the, those things are so uh, out, outside the normal universe of, of what's happening, and everything, and this that, that's what this show feels like. That's why I like it because it feels detached in a lot of ways, but it's still loosely connected, and I just hope that we get. Three to four more weeks at the very least. I enjoy, I shouldn't say, I, I am not against the fact that things have become a little more uh, PC in life. I'm mm. not like anti it or anything like that. Um, but sometimes with entertainment, I do think it goes to uh, to an extreme degree where like, man, I watched so many scary movies when I was a kid. I watched so many quote unquote like bad things growing up and it didn't like, didn't mess me up. It, like there was some, like, To be fair, horror movies are still very, fairly visceral. Yeah, but I mean, like, kid. The, but the, but if you look at like what was rated PG thirteen back when we were kids, compared mm-hmm. to the movies that come out now, th- every single like almost every single PG PG thirteen movie we saw when we were kids would be R now. Like that, like ter- like well, Terminator was R, but there's a lot of movies that like when you see them, you're like that movie was PG thirteen. Like there's things in movies that are that, that would never pass for PG thirteen. Do you now. know what the f- movie is that inspired the PG thirteen rating? No. It's Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Really? It's rated PG. However, it was so violent that they were skirting along to almost be like an R-rated movie. And it's the it's the film that first inspired the PG-13 rating. Because they're ripping the- dudes' hearts out. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty <laughs> it's pretty scary. I mean, I remember the first time I saw that, I was like, they literally rip a guy's heart out. I was like, oh, okay. Corimo. This is that movie. <laughs> uh, well, let's, let's actually move topics here before we start talking too much about uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Let's talk about Dustin Rhodes. Signing with AEW, uh, we, you know, a few weeks ago, you weren't here, but when we were talking about me going to Vegas, I told you guys that was uh, that Dustin was who I thought was going to wrestle Cody. Yeah. Um, I hated you for it. <laughs> Are you, so you're not into the idea of this match? No, no, no. I'm saying they hated you for oh, talking oh, about oh. it. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. No, I'm, I'm way into this Yeah, match. I'm super into the idea of this match, too. I, I uh, It's a legacy match. It, it is. It's something where it's like, obviously, they have history that's outside of AEW. There is no history in AEW yet, outside of, like, the press conferences and whatnot. So it's like it kind of brings something, like, deep-rooted wrestling history and legacy into this event, like, right off the bat. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm all for it. I mean, happy for Dustin finally being able to have such a featured match on such a grand stage. I love Gold Dust. Would have loved it if he had been able to carry that over. I understand why they can't do that. But, you know, um, it'll be so he's just going to be the natural Dustin Rhodes, I guess. I don't think he's going to be 
the natural because you see, he's got that new just face paint thing like he's it. doing. So you don't like new face <laughs> no, paint? No, I don't. But but I I haven't seen it in person. I haven't seen it in action. So I'll 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 wait. He was describing his reasons for like like his explanation for the new face paint uh, in that Road to Double or Nothing video. But I forget what his actual reasoning was. Um, I also don't love it. I, I think that I, I'd rather him just be Dustin Rhodes yeah. than this like weird Darth Maul's you know, brother. You know, yeah. I don't like it. There's this weird old dude who is a like dresses up as a clown on the Venice boardwalk, and I pass him all the time. But he's got like a, kind of a wrinkly face, and when you paint a kind of wrinkly face, it looks sad. And so sometimes when I see like a 50 year old man with a wrinkly face and is painted, I'm just like, ow, sad. I don't mind it. I also think it's, <laughs> you know why I don't like it is because I, I, I it look it doesn't look like it but it reminds me too much of Seven when he did the WCW thing wasn't it Seven or Sin Sin was it Sin or Seven Seven, seven. it was Seven that's what it was I seven. saw uh, where he had like the white paint. the white yeah. paint. and he was like stalking children yeah <laughs> it, like when I look at it I go like well that's not gold dust that's like a I'm worried he's gonna have like this big hat again and the duster and it's gonna be like a new version of Seven yeah. of like what he actually wanted Seven to be you know and I'm like no 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 no, no. That, just be Dustin Rhodes it's okay like we just need Cody versus Dustin yeah um, my favorite part about this match is that I know that uh, the their match that they had against each other where they finally dig at a program wasn't super well received in WWE um, I think it was at Fastlane, right? Yeah. Or something like yeah, that. Yeah, there was a, the, the the finish was a was a mess. And... Yeah, I remember it was very not well received. But I always felt like they were gonna they were gonna put it all they were gonna put it out there. They were gonna well, pull, they wanted to do a WrestleMania off. match. Didn't they? That's what I was gonna say. They, yeah, I, felt I like thought if they did a WrestleMania they, match, yeah. they would have pulled it off. They were they 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 might not have done what everyone thought they were gonna do at Fastlane. But I think if they had been given that WrestleMania match. They would have done it. They would have had that match they wanted. I think that match was constricted for time as well. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, So I really feel like with the emotion here, um, with the backstory, to me, it's one of the matches I'm looking forward to most now at All In. Mm -hmm. Or Double or Nothing, sorry. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm also wondering if, you know, if going forward afterwards if we get the Rhodes legacy again and wasn't that their name the Rhodes legacy when they were a tag team if we get them the Rhodes brothers yeah. uh, as a tag team again in AEW or if Dustin just transitions to a backstage role because that would also make sense and that, that kind of feels like the most natural progression to me I mean the dude is Pun 50 intended. yeah like I mean hey oh I didn't even mean the dude. <laughs> and, and, I mean they must be offering him some real money they really must because you know why I um, I really well I mean, I don't know why, but I would think that, you know, Dustin would have been offered a similar job at WWE, wouldn't you? I would assume so. I mean, they've kept him around this long for some reason. Yeah. You know? I would assume so. But He's been I, around for a long, like a, this this last run has been since like 2012 or yeah. something. I would, I, I agree with you. Um, I also feel like at his age and the, the relationship he had with Dusty, and this is just me guessing, pure, pure speculation, but like. You know, it's known that he didn't always have, like, the best relationship with Dusty. And I would imagine, like, on the later years of life, you really don't want to be in a a battle, so to speak. With your family. With your family. Like, he already lived that life. He already did it. He's gotten sober. He's changed his life around. He's become much more positive, uh, much more spiritual, it seems like, on social media and stuff, religious and stuff like that. So uh-huh. I would, I, I could very much see Dustin being like, I don't want to fight my family anymore. Yeah. I want to be on the f- same side as my yeah. family, you know? No, no, yeah, I mean, that too. Being supportive. Especially like, if their whole goal, as they claim, is to give wrestlers a better you know, life, like to give a, a better, what's the word I'm and, looking for? And like, push yeah. comes to shove, even though Dusty Rhodes was in charge of NXT for the longest period of time, the dude was also in charge of like, you know, the booking at Jim Crockett Promotions and WCW on multiple different occasions as well. Like he spent, that's why Vince McMahon hired him. because yeah. he was tired of fighting him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and while, while we're on the subject of AEW, because we're running out of time here, uh, I want to talk about this other big story of the week, and that was Undertaker and Kurt Angle being pulled from StarCast. Uh, Matter of time. It really was. I was... I, I honestly didn't think it was going to happen. Even when it got announced, I didn't believe it was going to happen. But. What? They got a consolation prize. Of Mark Henry. <laughs> of sexual chocolate, baby. <laughs> Big bar of sexual chocolate. Oh, it's funny. You know, he. Uh, they didn't. Know, but he's like, is, isn't is he like an active employee? Yeah, like he's supposed but to he be like the a, conscience of the, of the locker room now or something like that. But he does lots of outside appearances, Mark Henry. He's I'm been shocked, doing outside I'm appearances for a while. I'm letting anybody go do anything there like I mean clearly even though I know it's not directly being put on by AEW but it's pretty clearly affiliated with AEW it cracks me up when people are like AEW and StarCast aren't the same thing 
Are like, you shut that up. dead? Shut up. They're literally doing the AEW weigh-ins at StarCast. They're clearly working together. They're The second an AEW signing gets announced, suddenly they're announced that same day for StarCast. Like, we're not stupid. Yeah. Like, obviously I mean, they're I am working a little together. Bit, but... <laughs> um, but uh, Conrad was actually talking about it, Jamie, the on Taz's podcast. I listened to a little bit of it, and he was talking about his his kind of like plan for having to announce that Undertaker and Kurt Angle were pulled, and how he had like how he tried to like stack up other dope announcements right afterwards so people wouldn't notice or people wouldn't be as mad about the Undertaker thing. Uh, so yeah, so after they announced that Undertaker was being pulled. Uh, they announced that they were going to do, uh, that Taz is going to be there. And apparently Taz doesn't do a lot of conventions, which I was surprised huh. by. But apparently he, like, super doesn't do conventions. Mm. So it's, like, a bigger deal for him to do them. Um, and then they announced uh, that they're going to show the Bret Hart-Tom McGee match at, at one of the things, which is kind of cool. And then uh, Kobayashi is going to be uh, And Tom of- McGee will be there. Oh, yeah. And Tom McGee is going to be there. Great. Uh, but- <laughs> <laughs> You know his line's gonna be really long. No way! You're I think tripping. It is. I think it I is. Know. He wrestled afterwards and he d- he didn't do well. I think it's gonna be because of this. Vi- I think because of this video and the internet attention it's getting, it might be bigger than you think. If Flavor he's doing the month. A, if he's doing a photo up with Bret Hart, he is. Oh no, they're doing a show together. They're sa- they're gonna be next to each other. I think. I don't think they're doing a photo op thing together. I maybe. I th- look at. I think they're just doing the show where they're talking about the match. Hey, together. That, that's such a. If uh, they're doing a photo op together, that will get. You, it's like when D'Lo Brown, it'd be much more of a photo op than when D'Lo Brown and Draws. and Draws did one. If you had a picture with Tom McGee. How hard would that be to explain to a non wrestling fan? You just tell everyone it's Kenny Omega. I'd just be like, <laughs> no, well, I mean, dad. to some extent, to some extent, like Kenny Omega would still take a little bit of work to a non fan, but it'd be like, this is Tom McGee. He wrestled another wrestler named Bret Hart, who's from Canada. And he's really, really popular. Anyways, and he made Tom McGee. Really good. Yeah, and, oh, we, but let me explain. Some wrestlers are good and some are really bad. Like, it would take so long to explain why can the I, importance of can, Tom McGee's photo. Can I see this match? No, you can't. Nobody can. No, <laughs> you, also you wouldn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> also you wouldn't. <laughs> like it. Oh man, um, I did think it was hilarious that like this this uh, thing that Conrad did for Sports Illustrated where he talked about Undertaker being pulled. It cracked me up that so basically he says that like he paid Taker the deposit. Man, once it got announced, WWE contacted Taker's management team and were like, uh, no, you can't do this. <laughs> and so Taker's team contacted and was like, sorry, WWE says we can't do it now. And they returned the deposit. Um, and so Conrad said, I had a friend. Oh, wait, no, I'm going to get to the good part. He said, uh, I was assured that damages would be covered, a suitable replacement offered, or some sort of compromise to make everyone happy. I suggested Vince McMahon, Hunter, or Stephanie McMahon, and I said I would donate 100% of the proceeds to Connor's Cure and mass the donation personally, which would turn a negative into a positive for everyone involved. I think it's hilarious that he has the balls on him to think that, like, <laughs> that they're going to be like, no, Taker can't come, but Vince will come. I mean, I feel like he was, like, I feel like that's I what he's like going he for. That. Like, he's just like, well, so give me Vince then. Yeah. No, because he's still co- in the same article. He's complaining about how they are ignoring him. Like he said, unfortunately, Thompson was told he couldn't book main roster superstars. He then tried to book Shawn Michaels, but HBK reportedly backed out to the, due to the close proximity of Starcast and AEW. Um, like I mean, and then he said that basically he kept he's been contacting them every day, and now they're ignoring him. Yeah, um, I just don't think that. I mean, maybe that, that that part may be true, but I don't think he really took him offering uh, to get Vince McMahon serious. How about, he did. How about this? I don't know. Do you think that they're going to pull Mark Henry and just keep giving him, like, low-ball talent? He's like, you can have Heath Slater. <laughs> you can have Rhino. You can have Rhino. You want the B team to replace Undertaker? Yeah. They're on SmackDown now. Um, you can have Mike Kanellis. And lastly, before we got to get out of here, I'm surprised they haven't turned the red light on us, but I'm just going to keep pumping through for a few minutes. Oh. Uh, what do you guys think about this weird CM Punk returning to the ring thing? <laughs> yeah, what was that all about? Okay. Did you not see this? No, I, I saw why, it, but, like, why there? So apparently it's at the it's at a place where he did many a indie show when he was coming up in the business. Okay. Um, some of like where his most uh, 
uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like pivotal moments in his indie career that got him there. Basically, it was it'd be like similar to someone in Reseda showing up to PWG. You know, so no, the guy who he hit the GTS on would, has no relation to him. Really. No, but the guy was wrestling a steel who trained him. Got it. And then the person that who, seems a little bit. I mean, and I, the person who brought who brought him out was Dave Prazik, who was Prazak, who was also a big part of the indie uh, rise of CM Punk as well. He, just, was, he was friends with him growing. It, you know, in that, it in seemed, that rise. it seemed odd just because I was like this. Punk care about like those aspects of his career anymore. I, just, I, I and I'm not saying that like you know he doesn't. I just don't know. I would have said no. I would have said like I don't feel like he does. But then it was weird. Like the other day, I shouldn't say it was weird, but like you know, I think it's because I'm so used to seeing CM Punk be negative about wrestling. But the other day when someone posted a picture of um, uh, Rey Mysterio, Rey Mysterio and Eddie, Eddie Guerrero, he was like, "That's the most positive I've seen CM Punk talk about wrestling in, in a while, forever." Yeah. Apparently, he was also liking tweets about the show coming up. Uh, prior to that indie show before it happened, interesting. And also, uh, according to the, some of the you know some of the reports, it was like he sh- he was there hanging out in the parking lot basically, and it's it's near where he wow. trains. And he was there, and they they were like, "What if we do this?" And he was like, "Good idea, let's just do it." And he just ran in, did it real fast, ran back to his car, and drove off. That's funny. And to be honest with you, that seems like a very CM Punk thing to do. Yeah. Unfortunately, and I hate to say this, I didn't care about it as much as I should have. Yeah. I, I I just. I just didn't care. I was thinking about it. He's this so m- anti wrestling. It's like, why do I care about this guy who hates wrestling? Yeah, I mean, he's, and he's been gone for five years. And it's also like, look, it. I love CM Punk, and for him, great. This is what makes him happy. Great, great. But I'm not gonna get hyped on a guy running in a mask where he won't even say it was him. Like, it just doesn't hype. It doesn't really get me hyped at yeah. all. I want to see. Well, I'm. I want to see his music play and him hit the stage with AJ Lee looking pissed, doing the whole this thing. That's how I get hyped about CM Punk coming yeah. back. I don't give a fuck about. Knights of Columbus Hall. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> no, I mean, I, 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 I mean, I just was, I saw it happen and then I was like, oh, that's funny. I mean, like, if he wants, yeah, like, I, if that, it, like, if he was having fun, clearly, and like, all power to him. Yeah. And, um, but I mean, I didn't get excited about it. I, I laughed. I sat back and chuckled. I was like, oh, that's a fun little bit of business, as they say. But, um, I just didn't really. It didn't really make much of a blip on the radar because I didn't. It didn't see. I. It didn't. If he wanted to make it more than what it was, I feel like he would have done something again. Or, or just said it was him. Yes. <laughs> yeah, or that. But um, um, who knows if this was a one night thing? Maybe he. Maybe this was just a test in the waters, putting a t- big toe in yeah. first. You know. I mean, well, AW. Is- I mean, like I don't have any inside info on this one, but like. When Tony Khan was asked about CM Punk's run in the other day, he gave like a real weird response that was like, they was asking like if there was interest from AEW in, in in CM Punk, and he gave like this like real roundabout response where he didn't actually say shit. I actually watched that whole thirty five minute interview with Tony Khan, and it was impressive how he was able to talk around everything yeah. and not give any actual <clears throat> answers. I mean, that's to that's, anything. That's a good businessman, right yeah, there. It's crazy how he was able to do that. Give an answer that fulfills like the the question without answering any details. God, I'd be the worst at that. <laughs> yeah, you would. But my speculative brain here just goes like, hmm. They mentioned CM Punk on BTE a few weeks ago for, like, the first time ever in regards to this whole librarian thing. Then, like, a few weeks later, he he uh, he makes this weird indie appearance to try and do the go to sleep again to see, him. maybe in my opinion, to see how, if he still has it in him. You yeah. know, like, because it's not like he's trained at all. So, I mean, like, you're not going to be super slick in the ring after yeah. five years away. Not going to be nearly as strong either. No, and that's why it made sense that Go to Sleep didn't look like that crisp or anything like that. Um, and then, you know, where this, I think it was the Observer reported that CM Punk was like the f- person that Tony Khan initially wanted to build a promotion around prior to coming to the Bucks and prior to coming to wow. Cody. So. I don't know. I just feel like maybe there's something there. That'd be cool. I mean, that would be that would be a huge get. That would be a huge moment. That'd you be better the, clarify this is speculation. Right I said. Now. I said. Okay. I started it by saying I, my speculative brain just this is the things I see. You and I said go, no. I need you to reiterate. Though. I feel <laughs> like you said it was facts. No, no, no. You I'm heard just, it here, folks. Ryan said it's an fact, exclusive. Facts verified. Pro wrestling sheet on exclusive. Instagram. I hate you guys. I there was there's like a weird fake imposter account that been that's been tweeting stories as if they were mine, <laughs> and it blew my. I've just been so frustrated because there's nothing I can do about it, and it's like. It said that, like, I said that Emma was coming back to WWE, like, also, and then I had people tweeting me, like, hey, dipshit, 
Hey. Remember when you said Emma was going to come to WWE? Maybe your sources suck. And I was like, I didn't even say that. <laughs> You're looking at an imposter account, dickhead. So, yeah, that's... So, hey, who has the time to do that? Like, you're not that great. It's ridiculous. There's a there's a, there's an Instagram account. I don't even want to give them shine, but like, there's an Instagram account that's just like fake wrestling news. That's the whole point of it, and they're just photoshopping wrestling sites like Twitter pages to look like their stories, but they're they're fake, and it's dry. Oh, what is it? Crazy. What, what is it? I want to follow it. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jamie, where can people find you at on the internet? <laughs> That was funny. <laughs> um, you can find me on Twitter at J A M I E underscore I O V I N E or on Instagram at J A M I E I O V I N E. Or you can catch me at Coastline Clash this May 13th at Irvine, the Irvine Improv. Come catch us. I'm headlined by David Arquette versus the, li- the one of the two librarians, Peter Avalon. Nice. Me and Royce Isaacs in action against Tyler Bateman. Joey Ryan will be there. MJF will be there. Willie Mack will be there. It's a fun card. You should come on down. Thanks. Yeah, OC people, you should definitely check that out. I'd, oh, Championship Wrestling Hall was never in the OC that I can never. remember. This so. is the closest, really, we've been to any really dope, like, um, area. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so this, <laughs> I'm really looking for. <laughs> hey, Port Wainimi is popping, Jamie. I like Port Wainimi. It's kind of nice. Look at the beach right there. I like the word Wainimi. <laughs> Eli, where do you find you at on the internet? Twitter, at Elijah Bates. Instagram, at Brindle Beard. Wait, did you mention the network, too? Did you guys have a, you guys have a drop? Oh, yeah, we have, um, we have some cool was drops. Was it Post Malone? Or is that uh, we had, I, well, I think the sale's still going on. We just dropped, um, it's, uh, that, that's not an exclusive drop. That's okay. just a drop we had a partnership with um, uh, Funko with. They just wanted to do a flash drop. Um, we have a Toy Story and Metacom, the Bear Bricks. We have the Toy Story and Buzz from Toy Story 4 coming out. We have a Champs drop, uh, Champs, the first eSports line is coming oh, that's out cool. soon. And uh, it's coming out in five days. We have a drop from Antonio Brown, the new Raider, and uh, NBA 2K, Herschel, uh, Herschel, ba- the bags. And, uh, yeah, that's some fun stuff. I like it. I like it. All right, you guys check out all the top stories throughout the week. ProWrestlingMachine.com, the three you can find them. No, he did his already. Oh, I thought. But then I remembered you didn't say anything about network, yeah, so yeah, I went back. Yeah. Adelaide like, yeah, Bates, <laughs> Instagram. At Brindlebeard. They know where to find him. Uh, <laughs> WrestlingSheet.com, that's the website. You can find all the top stories throughout the week. YouTube.com slash C slash Wrestling Sheet. That's where all the videos are. Uh, you can search Wrestling Sheet Radio on every podcast platform. You can check it out on uh, Podcast One, Spotify, iTunes. Make sure you subscribe. You can find me on social media, at Ryan Satin. The website is at Wrestling Sheet. Okay, that's it. We're done. Officially tapping out. Until next time, stay out of the dirt and keep your eye on the sheet. Eli, don't do that. I hate it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs>